Yes, success. I believe most of us here today would have experienced this feeling before. The happiness that courses through your veins as the pride radiates from your face and you puff your chest up and stand just a little bit taller. The feeling that you finally managed to accomplish your goal after working so hard to achieve it. Now, your goal can be just about anything. From high frequency goals to low frequency goals. So what do I mean by high frequency goals to low frequency goals? To me, high frequency goals are goals that you, your friends, your family members, the people in your community, or maybe around the world share in common. Whereas low frequency goals to me are goals that chances are you, your friends, family members, the people in your class or around the world might not share in common. For example, high frequency goals may be your dream, um, high frequency goals may be, for example, your goal is trying to solve a really difficult math question. The chances are your elder sibling who have taken that class or maybe your seniors in high school or your friends might share the same challenge and made it their goal to solve this one challenging math question. Whereas low frequency goals are goals that are unique to an individual. For example, your goal is to be a veterinarian where you go up. And your best friend's goal is to be a soccer player. Now, notice that both these high frequency goals and low frequency goals share one thing in common. And that is, it's mostly to yourself and it's very personal to you. It does not include other people in them. But I stand here today to ask you, what if we could actually reimagine our goals to include others in them? So, what do I mean by that? Well, let me share with you a personal story to put this into context. When I was eight, my goal was to be a published author. I was an avid reader, and I would spend every single free moment of my time with my head stuck in a book. And I would beg my parents to take me to the bookstores every single weekend, so I would sit there for hours reading my favorite books and treating it like a library. When I was taking a break from reading all these books, I would usually look up to the shelves and imagine one day seeing my book being up there with the books of my favorite authors. And that was my goal. It was simple. I was eight. That was to be an author, a published author. Last year, I managed to publish my book, The Phoenix Perspectives. But my goal was very different from when I was eight. I did not only want to be a published author, but I hoped that my stories would encourage other young people to follow their dreams. But what changed? Well, when I was in high school, I started an online publication called the Phoenix Newsletters. I interviewed inspiring individuals from different industries in Malaysia and around the world and shared their life stories to encourage more young people to follow their dreams. This all started when I wanted to be a social entrepreneur. I had read in a magazine about a social enterprise, which I thought was really cool. So when I googled online on how to be a social entrepreneur or social entrepreneurs, all that I found was business models for social enterprises or successful social enterprises. But what does it take to be a social entrepreneur? Can me, a girl from Penang, Malaysia, be a social entrepreneur? It was in 2014, and the startup ecosystem in Malaysia was very nascent then. And so I did not have many people to talk to or ask. But when I found online, I couldn't find information as well. And then when I got the opportunity to actually meet real social entrepreneurs as part of Entrepreneur Accelerator Program in the States, I was really mind blown because they had more things in common with myself than I had previously taught. And so my stories in my online publication actually was very relatable to other young people as well. They started wanting more stories, and through the word of mouth, we eventually grew to serve more than 7,000 high school and university students just in Malaysia alone. However, I began to receive sign-up forms with house addresses where email addresses should be. I was really curious and confused, so I decided to investigate more. And that was when I learned that all young people in Malaysia have access to internet. 
the internet was something that I had taken granted for because I had access to it for most of my life. So I was really shocked to learn that there are other young people who did not have access to the internet in this ancient time. But these young people really loved the stories because it helped to change their perspective and motivated them to reach for their dreams. For example, when I interviewed an internet entrepreneur in Malaysia, he had grown up as a, a helper at his family's food hawker store. So he would help to serve the dishes to the clients or the people who bought the food, and they would collect the dishes back from them and collect the money. And that was what he did as a child. And when students from similar background who, grew, who are currently working at their parents' food store read the story of how he managed to grow from beyond a food store hawker to an internet entrepreneur, they were really motivated and excited because for once now, they can see their lives being more than just a food hawker and they can dream bigger. But how do we get these stories to students who didn't have internet access when this was an online publication? Up to now, they have been asking their teachers and friends to print out these online stories for them every month. But that's not very sustainable because you're kindly troubling other people to help you get the stories. So, a light bulb moment hit when I decided to actually publish a book and I decided to self-publish it. But self-publishing, that's just two words. And that sounds really simple. But it's not as easy as it seems. The naive me went into it thinking I could be done with it in six months. However, it took longer than that. To be a self-published author, you will need to write the book, obviously, um, find an editor, find a graphic designer to do the layout of the book, find a cover for the book, register the ISBN number for the book, sell the book, handle the marketing and distribution, and all of that. And I was just a university student. And I did not know how to do any of this. So, I looked at people who had previously experienced this before, and I asked them for help. Not all of them were supportive. Some of them told me, well, good luck you probably get it done in three years or never. But others were really supportive and encouraging, even though I could see that they were not really sure that this was going to work out. They tried their very best to help me along my journey, and for that, I'm very thankful for their help. And we managed to eventually publish the book in more in 13 months, and to date, the book has reached more than 1,000 youth in 20 plus countries, and we did all of this in six months. <coughs> Looking back, in retrospective, I am very thankful that my goal was not only to be a self-published author, but one author whose story could inspire other young people to follow their dreams. Because if my goal had just simply been to be a self-published author, I would have probably given up at the first few challenges and not gone on. But because I was motivated by how these youth really wanted the stories and I saw the impact of how these stories had on their lives, I was driven to overcome these challenges I faced to actually achieve my goal. So, you should, you'll ask me now, why should we reimagine our goal to include others in them? Well, from my personal experience, reimagining our goals to include other people in them can help make our goals more meaningful. It can also give us the determination, the grit, and the perseverance to actually face all these challenges that we will on the journey to achieving our goals. And if we actually think about it, if everyone started doing this, it could also help make the world contribute smallly, small, in a small way to make the world a better place. Instead of companies only thinking about profits, maybe they will start thinking about the community they operate in, the employees or the environment, or people in school might start stop out competing each other and instead try to help each other to the finishing line. But these are all just hypotheses in our imagination. In order to see the effects of this, we need to live it. And so I want to leave all of you today with just two questions. What is your goal? And how can you reimagine it to include others in them? Thank you.